Okay, I welcome everyone to another interesting topic. Today we'll have to find some of the support that we can use to track uh, good realization or go some good things in the field, especially when we're doing our food mapping for quads. You know, this is how to find good things. What variety there are various most of um, uh, varieties of quads, mostly um, using colors. Of course, we use colors to understand the kind of quads and their structures or the textures to understand the kind of words we are dealing with. My name is N.C. Gideon. N.C. Gideon is a geologist in geophysics and a train mine planner with some experiences in all different things. So I think um, for some of us that are actually joining us for the first time, please, and don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel, then keep asking your questions and your contributions, keep them coming. You can send us uh, our emails, you can call us. So I think we move quads. There are some of the interesting things about quads. Quads have been, you know, is one of the most resistant of minerals uh, that we have, and they are very, very abundant. You know, um, it, is, it is it is just a universal kind of, of minerals, actually universally associated with gold and dix, and it's just. Um, as a name, as a mineral name, quartz refers to a specific chemical compound called silica dioxide or the silica gas I O2. So I think quartz has been something that every uh, every prospectors in the world has actually been associated with. That is one of the clues that is actually used to actually find gold in most of the terrains. And also the record has it that most of the quartz we have. Um, most of the mines, the ones of the mines, even the you know the great mines of this world have been actually found by tracing quartz fluids. So it is something we need to pay attention to. So all types of quartz, most of the quartz I'm referring, but there are some quartz that I'm going to list here that are not just they are very rare. They are not just common and are associated with uh, good realization. That of quartz like rose quartz, the rock quartz, uh, some of the citrine quartz also. They are not actually that. And some reports in deposit of uh, Precambrian, Paleozoic, and Mesozoic, and some of the Mesozoic age tends to be massive and highly crossed, you know, be, uh, fractured and recrystalline. This is just because of the age difference. The recent ones that are older uh, appear to be well deformed or more deformed than the ones that are recent. The structures of all that are of four, which is the crystalline structure. The crystalline structure, uh, this is just the structure that you, you know you see the things that are visible and they, they can form an interlocking kind of network. The second kind of structure, the structure you see, of course, is that of massive when they are homogeneous and you know, um, with the strength, you know, they are homogeneous and they are isotropic. So you look at it, they are randomly kind of arrangement within the textures. Another one is the, the, the chalcedonic, is a crypto crystalline form of silica composed of a very fine intergrowth of quartz. So another, the last one is the amorphous, the one that is non crystalline. Um, I don't know how the particular among um, crystals and all that. So this is the structure of quartz. Then the first one here, we are looking at is the black and the gray quartz. The black and the gray quartz, some of these colors are the result of some impurities and some of the result of some other minerals in eggs, you know. This, most of them have been traced, have been actually traced back to carbons. You know, that actually carbon, the graphite, the tourmaline, that are actually associated uh, uh, with it. So such quartz is actually particularly common in Precambrian deposits, um, in practically also finding most of other kind of, uh, of, of rocks, these black quartz. And also, the, in terms of relationship that, of carbon and gold, it's not that dark, very, very clear, but it's been observed that whenever the black quartz and the white quartz are called together, they are everything they see that the black one has more, more, of, more of gold. So the second one is limonitic quartz. Limonitic quartz is exhibiting limonites from the name limonites. It is big, some kind of iron staining, iron oxide, and some containing some sulfide. You know, this highly stain impregnate the, most of them they have been impregnated by hematite, you know, and this actually occurs in every gold bearing. Most 
people bearing poly uh, polymetallic deposits or various works. So when you look at limon, the pores seem to exhibit this kind of stains. You need to follow it up. Can you look at this also? Wow, um, it's actually sh shared. It's actually shared. And uh, the cause is mixed with, um, it's combined with a, in a few lights. So, I think it's a good sample to go with. What are the other ones? Let's see, let's see the other one. Okay, we are looking at something here. See some presence of iron oh, yeah, Look at this, you can see some colors here. Looks like there are some enrichment, secondary kind of enrichment here. Okay, this is surface oxidation here. Another one is the golden yellow quartz. This is actually different from the citrine. Is between the yellow pots. This the yellow pots are very rare. They are very rarely actually associated with gold deposit. But the golden yellow pots is actually, as the name applies, the color that has been due to extremely finely divided um, gold dispersed through the crystals. You know, this is the kind of pots you actually need to uh, map out whenever you see them. Another one is the one that exhibits these kind of ribbon characters, um, characteristics, the ribbon pots. Uh, you know, this is the kind of pot that you see them sandwiched between slabs of rock. They are common features of gold pot deposits throughout the world. You know, so you need to look at some of these kind pots. Then the fifth one is fractured or the crystalline kind of pot. Dicks, we've seen this kind of pot in most of our, sometimes we are doing our field work, we find out that some of these pots, uh, you see them, they are crushed. You know, they exhibit this kind of cracks in them. And the, issue, the interesting thing is that when you see these cracks on the line, this is actually uh, what forms the conduit for hydrothermal uh, fluids where they settle. So most of them that are actually um, are cracked or have some jointed, you know, are the best kind of pores to actually look at. Something like this, you can see from the lines, the crack nature of it, you can see some, you know, kind of lining nature of these quads. Another one is multiple quads. When you see a quad that is actually smelled, you know, uh, smell with variety of colors, different kind of colors, you need to actually pick such quads and test, and test it when you're doing your foot mapping. Um, it's very, very important. You can see, see them with different varieties of colors. So um, from our visit to different gold mines around here in Nigeria, we found out that this is also an interesting kind of quartz that shows a good uh, sign and character that actually uh, has some good addiction. Then, digs from here, the seventh one, some of these quartz, we can actually rule them out. They are metastine quartz. You know, the purple in color, um, this quartz, you know, is a kind of crustified and the alchalcedonic varieties of quartz. And the particular indicator of tertiary good deposit, but some of these its colors are based on some of the impurities of some atoms, such as the manganese, the titanium, the nickel. But it's just uncommon in some of the gold um, deposits. Whenever you see them, most of them they are just restricted or within uh, local occurrences in the vein, and it's generally not that you refer it. So, but we need to bring it out. The amethystine kind of pores, um, they are actually most of them are for gem, actually used for gem purposes. Another one is the bull, the bull quads or the pork quads. These are, most of these quads are, uh, you see them, they are close, um, a kind of costly, um, crystalline, greasy appearance. You know, that's a sign of poor bull value, in, especially in Precambrian rocks. But in most of the younger rocks, they have been record that they are not really, they are really white in nature. They have been record, they are white, you see them, uh, you know, uh, record that some of them can Thing. Like they are not that cool. They are not that kind of good indicators of organization. So we need to actually map this. Then look at the rose quad. Rose quad appears very interesting. You see the colors looking very well and all that. And this can be another source of lithium deposit. 
is it can might contain some kind of small um, uh, amount of lithium from what I've seen because most of the time you see them occurring occurring within the pegmatite veins or the pegmatite rock deposits and all that um, they are not really a good a good one when it comes to you know when it comes to gold mapping so you need to understand that of those spots is not one of the best one to actually look at. So I think these um, these the, the nine varieties of quartz we actually uh, wanted to bring to you for for, for for fruit mapping in the field. Next, if you have further questions, you have any question, kindly send us. Uh, as soon as we get them, we'll reply them. And don't please forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com slash c slash mineral mining or you can actually visit any of our websites um actually uh, in below, uh, and send us some messages and your contribution thank you for listening